How you doing folks? Well, um, one of the issues I have with the Golf is that the heaters are absolutely useless in it. Um, once the temperature gets down anywhere close to zero, they just don't, uh, they don't do the job. I mean, you get lukewarm air out of them instead of proper hot air, and uh, it's no fun. So, um, the other thing as well too is when you're stuck in traffic, um, the temperature, uh, the engine temperature can climb up that little bit higher than I would like. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flush the coolant system and I'm going to show you how it's done. Um, I have fresh coolant to go into it and um, what we'll do is we'll pay, pay particular attention to flushing out the heater matrix. Um, the other thing as well too I need to show you is the um, there's been a little modification done to this car and I need to question why that was done so I'll be looking at the workshop manual about that. But um, let's, uh, let's continue on and see how we get on. It is actually uh, two degrees out at the moment, so it's cold as it is. So there's a little bit of irony in this uh, in doing this job today. But uh, I'm just looking here. See this copper pipe? Um, I'm wondering why that was installed. Did they rip a coolant hose or and repair it with that, or was there something else connected there in the past? Um, I think there might have been something else connected there, either that or um, they've changed the heater matrix in the past. Um, and done a bodge on it. So, uh, either way, um, I can question all I like, but uh, what I need to do is uh, disconnect those hoses. And uh, what we'll do is we'll disconnect the bottom hose down here. This is on the right side of the car. There's the hose that goes into the bottom of the radiator, and that hose then goes into the bottom of the thermostat housing. So, um, we disconnect that pipe, and the coolant will pour out of there. Um, gradually uh, because of the fact that the thermostat is still in so um, that will restrict a lot of the flow of water but uh, we'll be able to drain the water drain the radiator as well in the process um, and uh, we will disconnect both hoses on the heater matrix and stick a garden hose through there and flush it all out and hopefully uh, when I finish this job the engine temperature will stay lower and the um, heaters will work better so um, yeah, um, so first thing to do is to take off that uh, annoying little clip. Uh, VW used those uh, spring clips instead of um, proper Jubilee clips. Um, so we take that off and uh, in this case the power steering hoses are kind of in the way. Um, this is the first uh, VW I've done this on where, where there's actually been power steering on it. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, it shouldn't be too much of an issue though. Um, we won't let that bother us. And um, what I want to do though is I want to jack the car up because it'll make access an awful lot easier. So let's start by doing that. I have seen so many cars damaged by people jacking them in the wrong place or just throwing the jack in underneath floor pans or um, sills and just uh, jacking away thinking that that's all right. There are reinforced sections on the bottom of the car in order to jack them at. Um, but uh, on an older car what I like to do is I like to use something like a piece of suspension um, like such a such as the lower uh, lower wishbone uh, lower wishbone mount or subframe mount or something like that, which is a nice solid point at which to jack. It just means sliding the jack in underneath a little bit more and f looking and seeing what do, what looks solid and what doesn't. And don't jack it on the bottom of the gearbox or the engine or something like that. Common sense prevails here and safety above all else. So if you're working underneath the car, use axle stands. They're not expensive and it could save your life. So. The jack is now on the rear wishbone mount. It's worth investing in a decent quality jack. That's a snap-on proper workshop jack and it is so much better to use than pieces of rubbish that you buy elsewhere. So, coolant is uh, not great for the skin so I'm going to put a pair of gloves on as well while I'm doing this. I have a, um, I had the access stands underneath the vehicle's gearbox in the garage to drain the oil out of it. I hate the smell of gearbox oil. It smells like cat piss. I'm going to leave the jack under the axle stand, will just be an extra level of safety in this instance. I won't be really working under the car too much as such, and it'll be staying on its wheels, so it should be alright that way. So, first we're going to open the expansion bottle.
coolant level looks a bit low actually, which is not uh, encouraging. Got a suitable bucket. But I find this is the best tool for using to remove the um, remove the uh, clips that VW use on their uh, their cars. It's a I call them a channel locks, some people call them pipe wrenches, whatever, you know, that's what it is. So, there's the hose down there I've taken off, and that drained out the bottom of the radiator, and um, this is the one I'm trying to take off now, but uh, see there's a solid pipe there, so I need to undo this and maybe slide it back along, so we'll see how I get on there. Bloody time, nothing to look at there at all. It's more, uh, it's more rusty water than coolant, this is. So, I think that's our problem. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top hose off the radiator, I'm going to flush through the radiator, I'm going to flush through the heater matrix, flush through the block, and uh, We'll uh, try and get all of that sludge and crap out of there because uh, that's never going to help trying to cool an engine. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's not, not a bad result. At least we got all the, water, all the coolant out of it in that respect. So, uh, get a screwdriver. If you're ever given the opportunity, by the way, to catch your uh, finger in a uh, slide hammer, by the way, I thoroughly recommend against it. I did it at work yesterday and it's just killing me. So what I'm doing now is I'm undoing the Jubilee clips on the pipes onto the heater matrix, which are quite loose as it happens. I'm not entirely sure what the point of the um, copper pipes were. There's actually two of them. There's one on the inlet and one on the outlet. So, either way, it will be just reinstating them because they, they work. Copper, the rubber is stuck to the copper of the pipe. Try and work my way around it. Work my way around it to free it. There we go. Now, let's get the garden hose. It puts the lotion on the skin or else it gets the hose again. You couldn't make it up. I turned on the garden hose and look where it was pointing. Bloody typical. Oh well, I need my screwdrivers up there to dry it. Alright, oh, okay, so that's what we're up against. It's going to be one of those days, is it? So, put you guys there, you can see what I'm at, to some degree. So first things first, let's stick that, uh, stick that hose in through the heater matrix. So, water comes out of the head, and comes up here into the heater matrix, goes back here, and down into the bottom of the um, radiator, uh, down to the thermostat actually. So, 
Yeah, so what we need to do is we need to back flush it, so we need to actually drive the water back the other way. So that's not a major difficulty. Just stick the hose in here. I was hoping the water wouldn't run as clear as that. It's so that would suggest to me that the coolant in there is actually quite clean. Uh, it's fairly sludgy looking down there coming out of the top of the stat housing into the bucket. So uh, we'll get all that out anyway. In the meantime, while that's flushing, I will get the um, top hose off the uh, head here. Need to do a flush out the actual uh, top hose and radiator. That water's clean. Not really what I wanted to see, to be honest with you. I wanted to see dirty water there because at least we would have known what the problem was. Flush some of the coolant and dirt. We're getting a bit more silt and muck out of there now. You know, maybe just the heater matrix was airlocked. I did say the coolant level looked a bit low, so that could have been it. We need to investigate that, but when we're topping it up, we'll do it that way. The easiest thing I find to do is to hold the top, hold the top hose of the radiator up and fill it there, because then you're always going to get the highest point. And then pop it back down quickly. So that's what we'll do. Anyway, let's get rid of the hose. I think we're done with it, actually. It's as good as we're going to get it. Okay, so now that the cooling system is completely flushed, um, we can reconnect all the hoses. So we'll start by doing that. Um, first of all, I'll put the top hose back onto the uh, water pump. Okay, get that annoying little clip back on. Invariably, I end up with a song stuck in my head when I'm doing this. Today's song, oh, oh, um, today's head music is uh, Paradise by Coldplay. I'm not saying I actually like the song, it's just stuck in my head because it was on the radio when I was driving back from the motor factors. And it's funny, when I'm in work it doesn't happen to me as much. Sometimes it does, but... I hate these fucking clips, you know that? I think I might have mentioned it once or twice before, but... Now get on, you little bastard. Okay. That's one on. It's needlessly difficult. I don't know if modern VWs use these things, but honestly I don't really care. I don't like modern VWs that much. I lost interest in them when they stopped having round headlights, to tell you the truth. 
Okay, so we have all of the hoses that I want to have back on, back on. So um, let's get you guys back into position and let's start getting coolant into it. So the coolant system in a Mark II Golf, uh, this particular one anyway, takes um, about six and a half litres of coolant. It's actually 6.3, but we won't argue about uh, 200 millilitres in a coolant system such as this. So, apparently this is the right spec for the car, the blue stuff. So um, what we'll do is, we'll fill the radiator first, put the hose back on, fill the expansion bottle, um, and then what I want to do is I want to fill through the uh, cylinder head feed and in through the heater matrix. Try and make sure we get as many airlocks out of the system as possible. And then we'll run the engine top it up as necessary. So uh, here we go. Preferably in the hose, not all over my hand. So this is the concentrated coolant that I'm using, so uh, I have to mix it with water afterwards, so it's a 50-50 mix. So um, let's say we use three, three and a half litres of it, uh, or three and a bit litres anyway. And we'll use um, three litres of water, we'll just top it up with water then once we have as much coolant in as we want. is now full. I can stick that on quickly. Actually, you know what I might do is I might just tie that up. At least that way then we can fill a, put more coolant in through, uh, through the head. That way as well too, through that port. Bit of water pouring out of the heater matrix there. Okay, maybe I want the heater matrix pipe back on and fill it through this. Can you guess that I'm making this up as I go along? No, I would never do anything like that. Okay, so let's pop that, that hose back in. Do it for Jubilee Clip. It's easy enough to take off now. It's been off once, but at least these are Jubilee Clips. So they're not uh, going to fight me as much. That's tight now, so at least the heater matrix is now closed. Fill this. So we have two litres of coolant in. Minus what I just spilled in my hand. Let's call that the 200 milliliters. That uh, coolant will have gone down around the block, so we're filling up the block at this stage. And uh, when the block is full, you'll see coolant pouring out through the um, the top uh, hose outlet for the um, that goes over to the radiator. Um, so uh, yeah, um, actually, it's that's the return, not the inlet. Uh, now I have a watering can over the top behind us. Empty a little bit off so we don't just go anywhere. Here, gurgling. Okay, so there's the 
there's the water's going to let the top down off the head, so what I'm going to do is pop that hose back up. Okay, so that's that one. So now we have a completely closed system. I'll put this super annoying clip back on. This one should walk on, hopefully. after this is to run the edge. I'll try and remove any airlocks or any bubbles. Let's get it up, up to operate temperature. So what I like to do is go off for a drive, bring a bit of water with you in case the, pop, the hose pops off that you haven't got on properly or um, you need to top it up because it's overheating and there's a big bubble after coming up somewhere. So it's just good common sense. I'd love to find the person who made the design these clips and put a bucket on his head and swing off the handle, you know that? Yes, they work, but still. There we go. Right, okay, so let's put the hose clip back on. See what our water level is like. Pretty good. Put more in there because bubbles will come to the surface and not drop down. The header tank is basically full now. The hose is a bit of a squeeze. The automotive equivalent of burping a baby. I'm not entirely sure my wife would agree with. Yeah, okay, so the heater matrix pipes are not full. So we need to make sure they are by the time we finish it. Loads of, water, loads of air in there, you can hear it. Start a room. Look at the interior door, you know. Don't forget it's two degrees out. I'm slow to start in the morning when it's this cold. Bit of steam. Make sure the heaters are on cold. Middle of winter. Let's turn it off and get our levels up a bit higher. Still, uh, still far too much air in that system. So we take off the heater matrix pipe and fill it there. Get a high point of that. The 
your matrix is not affected by the thermostat because you wouldn't want uh, the engine to have to be up to full running temperature before you get, uh, get heat. You want to get it immediately, so that's why the uh, coolant comes straight from the head and not through the thermostat or through the pump. And obviously, it does not the pump, but you have to move somehow, but you get the point you're trying to make. And you can show the coolant. I know. I put water in it. It's just some of it spilling out. The young lads, the young lad next door is there. Uh, I'd say he's a budding mechanic, you know that. Put a little bit more coolant in because I'd say it's a bit diluted now. Let it, off the, let it off the jack and get it level. That's the next thing to do. Just making sure I took the bucket out. Trust me when I say I speak from experience on that one. I'm squeezing the hose here basically to get in the air out. You hear all that air? down there, so top that back up. Just keep going until you stop hearing air coming out the expansion bucket. Starting to sound a lot better now. So now what we need to do is we need to run the engine until the um, until the coolant uh, until the cooling fan clicks on because that means then the thermostat's open, the radiator's hot, and the engine's up to full running temperature. And then we can see if it's uh, showing any signs of overheating and see how the heaters are feeling. So let's do that. Whatever carburetor conversion kit that's on this, it cures a lot of problems, but it creates other problems. But that cold starting is not very good. It's not a it seems to be something I have to live with now.
hace lo que vamos a hacer más. Okay, so uh, things are warming up nicely here now. Uh, top hose into the radiator is hot. Heater matrix supply and return is hot. Bottom hose hasn't heated up yet, but it's getting hot, so the, it's going to start uh, opening the thermostat soon. But uh, the temperature gauge is showing that we're pretty much full running temperature now. Uh, so let's check the heaters. I'm not happy with it, to be honest with you. I mean, look at there, if your temperature is up to pretty much full, that's what it needs to be. The clock is wrong, by the way, that's another thing that's driving me mad. Uh, I need to keep <laughs> keep meaning to set it and uh, keep forgetting. I'll do it, I'll do it today. Well, I have the garage open to see the little fiddly buttons. You have to try and press them with a pen or something like that, so I don't actually have a pen in the car. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, they're lu lu they're lukewarm. They're not they're not hot, and they're not hot enough for um, winter driving in Ireland. Uh, so I'm wondering. See, I just don't know if that's actually pulling the cable fully open. So I think what I need to do now is I need to actually have a look and see where the control goes and make sure that the cable isn't uh, slack and is not actually pulling the uh, flap open all the way. Um, to, to the best of my understanding, and um, this. Uh, in this car, the heater matrix, well actually I do know that, that that's the case because the uh, supply and return to the um, coolant doesn't, uh, to the heater matrix doesn't actually have a little tap in it. In the, in a, in the T25, in the camper van, there's a tap in the uh, supply to the heater matrix in the dashboard and that's how you control your heat, you open and close that tap. It would be the same as it would be in a Mini or an MG or some British cars like that, but um, in this uh, the heater matrix is always hot and you're controlling how much air goes to or from the heater matrix or it goes through the heater matrix or not even so um, if that flap is uh, only half opening you're only going to be getting half heat so uh, I think it means just taking a few bits off the, out of the dashboard that little parcel shelf over there needs to come out as far as I know but what I'll do is I will do a bit of googling I'll do a bit of reading of uh, the Haynes manual I have for this car see if we can figure this out and we'll come back to it 